Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. This is Activist News and I just wanted to give you all a summarised version of Brendan O'Connell's story with all the updates in the shortest video possible. Lots of people have been asking me about it so I've tried to put this video together for you guys. Hopefully it answers some questions as well. I've also mentioned a lot of other sources for this information throughout the video. If you could share this video, re-upload it elsewhere, that would also be appreciated as it seems Google algorithms and YouTube censors don't much like the content I create. And for the sake of making this video short, I will begin. This is the situation as I know it in a nutshell. On May the 2nd, 2009, Brendan O'Connell went to a Friends of Palestine protest in Perth. He took his video camera in hopes of filming some of the action. This was the video that got Brendan O'Connell arrested for the first time. In his own words, he was there to hopefully film the Israeli counter-protesters who were down there last time filming the Friends of Palestine protest. One of the men that were photographing the Friends of Palestine protesters this time around was a man named Stanley Elliott Keezer, who got in a debate with Brendan O'Connell. No, 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 no. I wasn't filming you. We were standing out there. That's what I'm angry about. You took our photo. Why did you... So why didn't you come and engage us? If you want to watch the full video of this incident, check it out on the channel on the screen. This event resulted in Brendan O'Connell being put in prison. The Israeli ambassador at the time came out directly against Brendan O'Connell as well. And specifically, that was uh, there were two parts of the legislation used against me. One part was Section 77, which was the most serious. Uh, that was a form of incitement, which was pretty funny. But specifically to Stanley Elliott Keezer, um, under Section 80B, it was, I engaged in conduct likely, keyword likely, to offend, for which I received one year's jail. The problem didn't end there for Brendan, however. When he was in prison, he was assaulted, had his arm broken, he was harassed and threatened by people in the prison who he believes were working in the interest of the corrupt police officers that were involved in his case. When Brendan got out of prison, he was met with criticism and accusations a couple of years later, which got him charged with new crimes that he feels were trumped up and stacked against him in an attempt to silence him. Brendan O'Connell had a lot of information that he had published previously in regards to criminal and Zionist elements within Western Australia. Conditions were put on him that prevented him from being able to use electronic devices such as computers and mobile phones as ordered by courts. In hopes of getting out of a very bad situation and regaining his freedom of speech, Brendan decided to leave the country. However, this would also mean that Brendan would have to skip bail. If you wanted to know more about the specifics of the corruption involved in Western Australia, the abuse Brendan received, or the complete legal farce that was Brendan's charges and the conditions that were laid upon him, Brendan has a 200 page synopsis available on his blog for anyone to see. I highly recommend everybody go and check it out for themselves. I truly believe that anyone who reads this in full will be truly outraged at the extent to which human rights violations were committed against Brendan. In this short preview of the Jim Fetzer interview, Brendan explains why he believes he was targeted. The full interview is available on his YouTube channel. Um, I think it was my combining um, the, the facts of Orthodox Judaism and Israeli high technology contracts, which got them really up in arms, particularly the Orthodox Judaism, which I tried to present, and they panicked. They absolutely panicked and shut down the whole trial when I tried to introduce the Shulchan Aruch and other material in Judaism discovered by Michael Hoffman into evidence. Um, the Holocaust stuff appeared, because I, I, I did sidestep the issue a little bit, um, the, um, I can only say that the truth is no defence when you understand this legislation. The truth is not a defence because you can use the truth to still incite and offend people. This is why the legislation is so ridiculous. So they could just make a value judgment and say, well, we don't care if that's the truth. We think you hate Jews. You want to round them up and gas them, and that's why you're raising this. That's all they have to say. 
Brendan was living as a political refugee in Iran, where he was granted political asylum. However, due to the difficulties he faced over there, he decided to eventually make his way for Malaysia, where he was staying temporarily and promoting lots of content from. His experiences in both Iran and Malaysia is something that he has very heavily documented on his YouTube channel, and I highly recommend everybody go check it out for themselves. He spoke about many key important topics during this time, including Operation Taupiot, Unit 8200, the corruption surrounding Julie Bishop, and much more. It was during this time that Brendan O'Connell, a political dissident gaining a fair amount of attention online, wanted to get his story told in the public. He was also hoping to take this matter to the High Court of Australia, which would have been a landmark case. Conservative Australian politician lives in terror of Israel. It's a post I did about the case, the High Court case. Watch the video, it's an eight minute primer. I did it on March the 20th. It's an eight minute primer to tell you why the High Court case is so important. I'm the first to get it in there. Julie Bishop, Foreign Minister of Australia, she must rebuke the Israeli ambassador to Australia. This is what they don't want me talking about. There she is with Benjamin Netanyahu, who clearly got a bit excited with Princess Julie. She was a bit of a goer in her day. I'm having a laugh about the Aussie spirit. About Brendan was one of the first people in the state of Western Australia to be charged under these new racial vilification laws. What this means is, in the future event that these charges were ever dealt with, judges may look back on these cases to set a precedent for future cases on this matter, meaning Brendan's case could be the pioneering benchmark for whether free speech is protected or punished. Political speech needs to be protected and whistleblowers should not have to be persecuted. This is another reason why Brendan's case is so important. Brendan eventually tried to make his way to New Zealand where he was advised by a man named Chris Paul who told Brendan he would get a fair hearing and possibly get him on a protected person's visa. Whether this was set up or not, I do not know, but when he arrived at Auckland Airport, he was stopped by immigration officials who told him he couldn't come into the country, at which point he was arrested when he announced that he was going to return to Malaysia instead. He was taken to Mount Eden Jail and imprisoned in remand facility without any known charges. The justification for being arrested without charges that they give, at least, is that they were holding him on character grounds, grounds of which he was arrested and the conditions he is currently in could only be considered as a form of torture, and generally when they hold people under character grounds, it usually means that they're somewhat of a threat to national security. So it seems to be all very unusual. Brendan's legal team have also tried to take this matter up with DFAT, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, but they have been ignored and stonewalled. No surprise as Julie Bishop, the Foreign Minister of Australia, is very busy dealing with other lawsuits regarding secret funding of taxpayers' money being illegally given to finance Adani and their controversial mining practices. Julie Bishop is also a person that Brendan has covered in his videos and would likely much prefer that he stayed silenced or possibly extradited back to Australia to face new charges. In a recent conversation over the phone between Brendan and someone on his legal team, he explained his situation. Right, but if you could get onto like, there's a guy called Nicky Hagar, he writes about my material and try and get some people to come in when you can. But the biggest thing is, is that, hey, I can talk with you, do an interview and put the audio out, but they are detaining us in a highly high risk environment totally contrary to the United Nations rules on the treatment of prisoners and asylum seekers. All right, so Jacinta fucking Ahern is lecturing the Australian government when they hold us in maximum security facilities, no access to paperwork, no access to the laptops, no access to any way legal material, nothing. In fucking Manus Island, they have mobile phones, access to the internet, printing facilities, photocopying facilities, cooking facilities, and they can walk around in the sun. We can't even see the sun. Yeah, I know. It's... I'm going to be... Sp the key is that Carol opposes my warrant of commitment. That's all she has to do. And that's what she's supposedly organising. You can bring a bit of pressure to bear, but really it's up to the lawyer. Yes, agreed, agreed, agreed. Well, I'm, tr I'm trying to get onto this Davis, who's the Immigration Minister. Okay? Yeah, I, I would focus on nothing but chatting every now and again, once a week with Carol, maybe. There's not much you can do. It's up to the lawyers. Uh, but what is, is to, for us to stay in contact, and you record my calls and publish it. Yeah, I'm... So this is what they're doing. They're holding us in maximum security environments, contrary to all the rules. 
United Nations, I said to the judge, we're getting the transcript, we're going to get it sent to you and the audio. I said to the judge, uh, do you rule on immigration matters? And she said, I'm not answering that. I said, are you aware that New Zealand is a signatory to the United Nations Convention, including the United Nations Human Rights Commission and the treatment of asylum seekers? I'm not answering that. Brendan is still currently under arrest and is awaiting trial until the 5th of December, but his legal team speculates if Brendan is unable to leave New Zealand and get back to Malaysia, he may have to stay in jail in Australia for up to three years. Myself and a few others are currently campaigning to get Brendan's story heard and hopefully make him a household name. So we ask that you please share this video around. My main YouTube channel has been subject to censorship and even my backup channel is starting to have problems. And also other channels like Nick's Bureau, Zionist Report and many others are actively trying to spread the word. So be sure to check out those other channels as well. There have also been slanderous news articles that seem to have come out about Brendan O'Connell in what seems to be an attempt to discredit and undermine his character. Sources such as JPost and Stuff.co.nz use phrases like conspiracy theorist and racist anti-Semite throughout their articles. However, anyone who knows Brendan and the truth about his story understands why he's being portrayed in this negative light. We all know who runs the media. To date, at this time of making this video on the 19th of November 2017, Brendan has been in jail for almost five weeks without any known charges. And we probably won't know until at least the 5th of December or as late as March in 2018 if more court hearings adjourn. Unfortunately, that's all we know about the situation with Brendan O'Connell, but we'll try to keep you up to date. If you like this video, please be sure to comment below and give it a thumbs up. If you want to know more about Brendan O'Connell, be sure to check out the description for links below. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe as well. And until the next video, thanks for watching. Peace.